Kalagitnaan ng heat wave ang pagdating ko sa New York. Nariyan pa rin ang banta ng COVID, pero hindi na halata. Dahil hindi na utos ng batas magsuot ng mask dito sa Amerika, halos balik na rin sa dating gawi ang mga tao. Ngunit noong simula ng pandemya, naging sentro ng pagkalat ng virus ang New York City sa buong mundo at ang distrito kung saan maraming namatay ay lugar din kung saan maraming Pilipino. Matatagpuan ng Little Manila sa Queens, isa sa limang boro o distrito ng New York City. Kung ikay bagong saltang Pinoy sa Big Apple, dito ka dumayo. Sa gitna nito, matatagpuan ang sikat na restaurant na Amazing Grace. Para akong biglang nakabalik sa atin. Gumagawa at nagtitinda sila ng ensaymada at pandisal. Sa kabilang bahagi naman ang dine-in area kung saan pwedeng umorder ng top silog, sisig at iba pang paborito natin. Ang saya naman? Sa Bronx? Yes. Wow, ang saya. Para kayo yung isang barangay doon. Ha? So, ano yung feedback tungkol dito sa kinain nyo? Ano, okay ba? Ano bang, bakit popular tong sisig nila? Anong, anong meron? Anong kakaiba? Siyempre po, yung taasa ng pagiging Pinoy natin. Oo. Oh, oh. <laughs> Andiyan ka din. Oo. Oh, oh, oh. Yung hinahanap ka ng patimpla, kaya pa rin siya. Kasi um, mas yung top silog, yung top itself, yung sweetness and saltiness. Oh, oh. Matagal ng restaurant ang pwestong ito. Kilala ito dati bilang Crystals, pero ipinenta ito at ibang pamilya na ang nagpapatakbo. Ito yung matatawag natin Filipino comfort food. Kasi kahit malayo ka sa Pilipinas, Pumunta ka sa lugar katulad nito, Amazing Grace Restaurant sa Little Manila, sa New York. Maalala mo yung comforts of home. Tatlong taong gulang pa lang ang Amazing Grace. Binuksan ito noong Nobyembre 2019. Ilang buwan bago pumutok ang pandemya sa mundo. Pagmamayari ito ng pamilya ni Princess Diane de Leon na architecture student dito sa New York. So, December 2019 pa lang, nag-shutdown na. Opo, so, naman. Na so, yung... kabibili pa lang ng pamilya mo, nag-shutdown na siya. Hmm. Wow. Kasi hindi po namin anticipate na magiging ganun eh. Parang na-discourage din kami. Baka mali yung kinawa namin. Pero, pinangyari po kasi parang ano, marami na kami ano, natulungan ng mga nurses. Siyempre, may mga ano, families na wala silang time kumain dahil ano, um, Parang reliant sila sa mga ano, restaurant business. Tsaka, Paano kayo uh, nakatulog sa nurses? May mga ano, grupo na pumunta sa amin. Katulad ng ano, Little Manila Queens. Parang may program sila, um, Meal to Heal. Through Meal to Heal, nakaka, ano, kami, nakaka-donate kami ng pagkain para sa mga nurses din sa Elmer's Hospital. Nakatulong din po kami sa mga ano, frontline workers sa pandemic. At saka syempre, nung, ano, nung pandemic din, parang kami na yung open everyday. So, minsan, ah, syempre, gutom na sila, galing sila sa trabaho, may mga nurses na nag-night shift. Isang registered nurse ang nanay ni Princess na nagtatrabaho sa post-ambulatory unit ng isang ospital habang pinatatakbo ang Amazing Grace. Isa ang restaurant nila sa mga nanatiling bukas sa kasagsaga ng pandemya. Iilan lang ang natirang nagtatrabaho rito noon. Ang kanyang tatay ang nag-aasikaso ng mga order at pag-deliver ng mga pagkain. Habang silang mag-ina ang nagsasara nito sa gabi. Matapos ang shift ng kanyang nanay sa ospital. 
Habang nagka-classes sa at saka nag-assignment, nagtatrabaho po ako dito ng full-time every day. Yan yung struggles ko, syempre. Pero iba din ang struggles ng nanay at tatay ko. Yung nanay ko, for a short period of time, nag-ano din siya sa um, hospital para tulungan yung mga nurses sa ano, front line. Kaya syempre, parang ano, um, nakakapagod din. para physical toll sa amin, tsaka mental toll din. Kasi, syempre parang ano, nakikita namin na mababa ang mga sales dahil walang tao sa labas. Kaya, parang, it's, it's very, ano, very, very mental toll, emotional and physical. Sa mga nagdaang buwan, lumuwag ang safety protocol sa lungsod at dumami ang kanila mga customer. Nakatulong din daw ang mga nagpo-post ko sa kanila sa TikTok. Bakit Amazing Grace yung pangalan? Ha, um, sa totoo po, Christian po kasi ang ano, mommy at tatay ko. Eh syempre, parang nagpapasalamat po sila sa Panginoon dahil um naka-open po kami ng business na naging successful kahit may pandemic. Kaya parang ang iniisip nila is, is an amazing grace. Tulad ng komunidad dito, dumaan sa matinding hirap, lungkot at takot ang Amazing Grace. Pero buhay pa rin. at masasabing lalong tumatag. Ngayon, hindi lang ito kainan. Pero para naging community center na rin yung Amazing Grace at yung mga ibang um, businesses dito katulad ng Phil Am, kasi habang kumakain sila, parang parang ano, may, may sense of community, may sense of family lahat dito. Parang habang bumibili sila ng pandesal, nakikita ko rin yung mga customer habang nakapila sila. Parang na... Nakikita ko may mga bagong relationships na nangyayari, may mga ano, naging best friend dahil lang ano, nakatagpuan sila dito. Mula sa programa nilang Meal to Heal para sa mga frontliner, sumali si Princess sa community org na Little Manila Queens Bayanihan Arts ng Phil Am na si Jacqueline Reyes. Tubong California si Jacqueline, pero matagal na nakatira sa si New York. Ang kanilang grupo nagsulong para ipangalan ang bahaging ito ng Roosevelt Avenue bilang Little Manila. Inabot na ng dalawang taon ang proseso para opisyal na kilalanin ang lugar na ito. What was your role in this street sign? Uh, I guess I was the shepherd for the whole process, if I could use a word. Who had the idea, though? You know, it, it was my partner, Xenia Diente, who does this work with me. Uh, she's the one that created the street sign, uh, a sign that looked like, that's a little manila, that looked like a street sign. But, you know, there were other ideas to get a Filipino street sign here in the area. I know before um, someone tried to get a Jose Rizal street, but it wasn't successful. And why is it important to put a street sign there? Here, uh, this is the heart of the Filipino community in New York City. So we wanted people to know that it was here. People, at least there's no excuse for a New Yorker to, to say we don't belong here because we have a sign now and the community has been here. Simula ng pandemya, nang isulong nila ang paglalagay ng street sign para sa Little Manila. Nitong ika-12 ng Hunyo, 2022, sa araw ng kalayaan na isa katuparan ng ang kanilang proyekto. Nagpagawa rin si Jacqueline ng mural nababati sa lahat ng papasok sa Little Manila. And so, Mabuhay, we wanted there to be a big welcome sign. As soon as people came in uh, to mm. the neighborhood, we wanted people to say, hey, this is where Filipinos are. So, but it, it acquired a special significance during a pandemic. Absolutely, right? yeah. Because of course, Mabuhay is, may you live. Yes. Malapit lang sa Little Manila, ang Elmhurst Hospital. Marami sa mga Filipino healthcare worker dito nagtatrabaho. At noong pumutok ang pandemya, sila ang nasa harap ng digmaan. Hindi tulad ngayon, kakaunti lang ang mga Pilipino sa New York hanggang dekada 70. 
iilan lang ang mga kababayan natin dito bago magpangalawang digma ang pandaigdig. At mga estudyante, mga unang Pilipinong pinahintulutang makapasok sa Amerika. Ito ay bunga ng batas na Pensionado Act of 1903. Yeah, New York City was home to many pensionados, many who studied at places like Columbia University, NYU, Fordham. Um, one of the more prominent um, pensionados at the time uh, was Carlos Romulo, who um, started as a journalism student um, in Uh, at Columbia University, uh, he established uh, the first Filipino uh, student bulletin, which was the first uh, Filipino uh, publication here in the United States. Um, and then we know he became a Pulitzer Prize winner and then later um, you know, a dignitary in the Philippines. But it started with his education here as a 19-year-old. Then you had Fernando Amorsolo come here as yes, well. Yes, yes. And so we have so many artists, educators, um, Uh, medical scholars, right? Um, like Encarnacion uh, Alsona was the first Filipina to get a PhD um, in the United States, and she studied here at Columbia University. Through the 15th, just three days. Um, and, you know, Lalo pang dumami ang pumunta sa Estados Unidos matapos ipatupad ang batas na 1965 Immigration and Naturalization Act. Tinanggal ng batas na ito ang limitasyon sa dami ng mga migrante mula sa Asia na pwedeng pumunta sa Amerika. And so as a result of that, you know, there were many professionals who were recruited from the Philippines to come to the United States. Um, and for them, um, and especially from a place like the Philippines that had been a U.S. colony for almost 50 years, Walang maiturong natatanging dahilan si Professor Nadal kung bakit sa Woodside Queen sa New York umusbong ang Little Manila. I couldn't tell you exactly why people chose Woodside. There are hospitals in Woodside. Yeah, Elmhurst, Elmhurst is huge. Is there. Mm -hmm. And there are also many of those people from Woodside who would then commute to their various jobs here um, all over the city. Um, mm. So many Filipinos work on the east side here in Manhattan in places like Bellevue and NYU, and then many work um, at Columbia and Cornell. Um, but, but it just became a home to so many people. And so, you know, another thing is that, you know, for Filipinos, it's like the, this idea of Bayanihan and Kapwa that when one person moved there, that's just where everyone wanted to move. They wanted to be around other Filipinos. And so while they appreciated, you know, the land of opportunity, mm -hmm. they still, you know, wanted to be uh, around other folks. And so, um, so this is why specifically in places like Uh, Woodside and Jackson Heights and, um, and Jamaica, Queens, uh, you know, you see families that have been there for generations because then they keep on petitioning other family members to come and then other people would even move. Ngayon, may 86,000 na Pinoy at Phil Am sa New York. Pilipino ang pangatlo sa pinakamalaking grupong Asyano rito. Ang kalahati sa mga Pinoy, dito na sa Queens nabubuhay at namamayagpag. Maraming Pinoy at Phil M. nurses sa Amerika ang nakipagsapalaran simula pa lang ng pandemya. Isa na rito si Ariane Meliton, isang physician's assistant o assistant ng doktor sa Elmhurst Hospital sa Queens, ang epicenter ng COVID sa buong Amerika noong 2020. And how bad did it get here? That, um, the entire hospital is basically an ICU unit. I can also attest that Um, our ERs was, ER, the emergency room, was very heavily packed. Um, not even filling up to the rooms, but also to the hallways. So, um, uh, you know, you open the doors and you just see almost everyone um, in stretchers or in pain. And um, at that time, you know, we're practicing um, PPE, you know, for protection for ourselves. But I don't think anything could ever really prepare you for such a sight. Isa ang Elmhurst sa pinakamalaking ospital sa New York. Ito na ang itsura ng Elmhurst Hospital ngayon. Tahimik na kumpara noong kasagsaga ng pandemya. 
So I would be the ones holding the camera and allowing family to have time to speak with their loved ones, even, you know, unfortunately they're in either in a coma or they're, um, they're able to respond. Um, but at least it gave them some kind of sort of comfort when they had that big disconnect when they stopped texting or to stop calling because unfortunately um, COVID progressed further. Good morning! Isa sa bawat apat na Pilipinong nakatira sa New York at New Jersey ay healthcare worker. At noong taong 2020, marami sa mga nasa wing health workers sa Amerika ay mga Pilipino bilang pagkilala at pagbibigay pugay sa sakripisyo nila. Nagbuo ang manunulat na si Ninochka Roska ng isang digital memorial, ang kanlungan.net. We had to break the wall of silence. Kasi alam ko lang mabigat yung rate of death among the Filipino healthcare workers. Consider now, I think ilang percent lang bang, uh, not even 10%. Mm-hmm. ang Filipino dito sa healthcare industry ng U.S. And yet, yung rate nila was over 30%. Much ng puti. The same rate as the whites. Ayon sa datos doon sa inyong uh, uh, digital memorial na kanlungan, no? mm-hmm. ang pinakamaraming namatay na, na healthcare workers of Philippine ancestry ay nasa Estados Unidos, no? Correct. Bakit Estados Unidos? Ang, ang layo ay, ang laki ng gap. Maraming factors, no? Uh, number one, yung uh, personal to patient ratio. Kumpara sa Germany, sobra ang baba ng number of doctors to patients, number of nurses to patients sa US. Mm-hmm. Uh, masyadong maraming inaalagaan ang mga healthcare workers dito compared to other places. Number two, of course, there is the racism factor na por kinurse ka, no? Na Pinoy, hindi ka masyado binibigyan ng pangangalaga. Like, meron instance na yung surgical face mask lang ang ginagamit, yung blue, na hindi sufficient kung close contact pa sa pasyente. Number three, yung tendency na kapag nagkulang ng personnel, kasi maraming nagkakasakit, white people, the same rate yan, ha? Uh, tatawagan nila yung, yung Pinoy para mag So, those three factors. Tapos mabait talaga ang ating healthcare workers. Eh. You know, hindi sila masyadong pumapalag. <laughs> Sa New York, hindi lang pagod at banta ng sakit ang kinahaharap ng mga Pilipino. Umusbong din ang anti-Asian hate. At naranasan nito ni Ariane sa subway. I just had a particularly hard day where I just kept my scrubs and I, and I took the subway like usual. Uh, unfortunately, an uh, individual followed me and um, started to say uh, slurs and um, mentioned that uh, I'm making a profit somehow from COVID and that uh, he, you know, he wanted to take my cell phone. He said like, you know, I deserve this after all. Like, and then targeting it towards like, um, also kind of race too, because at that time um, I did take off my, my, my N95, but I, cause it's, you know, after working 13 hours, mm. I kind of walking to the subway, if you're, separated and you're, and you're maintaining social distancing you could have your mask off for a little bit but I guess he caught a glimpse of my face and then he called me like you can't even be a, a good and chick you're dark and like weird things it was very all derogatory Mula noon umiiwas nang sumakay ng subway si Ariane Ayon sa Philippine Consulates in New York may naitalang 41 hate crimes na laban sa mga Pilipino mula noong taong 2021 lang Sa kabila ng mga nababalitang insidente tulad nito ngayon, matagal, malalim at masalimuot ang kasaysayan ng Pilipino sa Amerika. Bago pa tayo sinakop ng Amerika, may ilang Pilipino nang nakapunta roon. 
isa sa kanila ay ang ating pambansang bayani. Sa modernong panahon, Amerika ang isa sa pangunahing destinasyon ng mga Pilipinong nangangarap mga ibang bansa. Ngunit hindi alam ng marami hanggang dito ay nakarating si Jose Rizal noong taong 1888, mahigit sampung taon bago tayo sinakot ng Amerika. You know, he wanted to see what this was all about. Is colonialism worth it? Is, is United States colonialism a good thing? Sa distrito ng Manhattan tumigil si Rizal sa Fifth Avenue Hotel. Mula noon hanggang ngayon, itinuturing itong mayamang bahagi ng New York. So, Rizal ay uh, coming here. He, he stayed with the, uh, where the elite stayed at the Fifth Avenue mm -hmm. Hotel, the luxurious hotel where you know, dignitaries and wealthy people stayed when they came to visit. And you know, I think at the same time, you know, he was really trying to just understand you know, what this city was all about. Um, so if he stayed here, he would have been around all the socializing uh, of the wealthy and the elite, but also have access to the working class people that would come to these midtown neighborhoods to work. Right. Isa ang Brooklyn Bridge sa kanyang tinitigan. At iginuhi pa niya ito. You know, it, it, based on what he wrote, it seemed like he was impressed in some ways and sort of unimpressed in other ways. Unimpressed? Yeah, you know, like he, he was here for three days um, and in his journal he just wrote a few pages um, about his experiences, you know. Um, he wrote about like, you know, the, some of the monuments that he had seen. Noong panahon ni Rizal, napakahirap makapunta sa Amerika. Isinulat ni Rizal na hindi pa siya agad nakababa sa San Francisco dahil sa mahabang quarantine sa barko. Sa kutob ng mga otoridad na may dalang sakit ang mga pasahero galing Asia. Kaya para kay Profesor Nadal, hindi bago ang diskriminasyon at racism sa Amerika. Panapanahon lang. Nakalulula ang dami ng lahi, kultura, Since then, those relationships have been poisoned at nangyayari sa New York. By hatred and up to us now. Ahanapin mo talaga ang sarili mong komunidad dito. Sa pagbabad namin sa Little Manila, hindi namin gaano napansin ang mga isyo nagahati sa ating mga Pilipino. Naramdaman namin na mas nangibabaw ang malasakit ng mga Pilipino na nagsakripisyo para sa kapwa sa kasagsagan ng malawakang krisis. Kahit pa buhay ng ilan sa kanila ang naging kapalit nito. Damo mo rin ang pagbubuklod at pagtutulungan ng mga Pinoy at ang pagsusulong ng pangarap na magkaroon tayo ng sariling atin. Kahit malayo sa inang bayan. Mula sa New York City sa Amerika, ako si Howie Saverino, at ito ang eyewitness.